Hello, viewer out there. My name is Muhammad Abubakar with this week's edition of the program Reflections. In case you have forgotten, in the program, we reflect on the uh, life of those prominent Nigerians that have made a mark and also that have made the country proud in their respective ways. This week's edition is, of the program is special in the sense that it is hosting one of the few surviving Nigerians who have participated in the struggle to make Nigeria an independent country. Not only that, he belongs to the uh, political class of late Chief uh, Obafemi Awolo of great, uh, I mean, of uh, blessed memory. He is Chief David Edebri OAN the Esokban of Benin Kingdom and uh, he is the Oracle of Benin Kingdom. He is the overseer of operations of witches and wizards among other traditions he is holding in the Benin Kingdom. In the course of the program we shall hear from him uh, how he relates with uh, witches and uh, wizards. Join me to welcome uh, Chief David Edebri OON in the program. Sir, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, uh, on coming to your house, I see the red color is being given a prominence. Is it to scare away the witches and wizards or what? It is not. Red is uh, one of the colors of our traditional institutions. Red and white, these are the colors of Benin traditional institutions and personages. Uh, so it has nothing to do with scaring away the witches and wizards. Uh, witches and wizards. They don't have to come here. Uh, they cannot come here. Once, if they are brought here, for whatever offense or whatever uh, problem they might have caused in their respective uh, area, uh, we deal with them as tradition allows. You mean you deal with witches and wizards? Of course, yes. Mm. How do you deal with them? Well, the, I deal with them. They are brought here. There are two classes, the self-confessed ones, uh, and those who say they are not, but some other person say they are. If they are brought here, we have a way of dealing with them. And uh, if it is true that uh, he is a wizard or she is a witch, then we take him or her through some uh, traditional processes. All is to make the witch, witch or wizard ineffective and uh, to reclaim him back to society. Mm. It's not to kill the witch or wizard, but to bring him back to the society. But by the time we finish with that uh, particular person, he will no longer use that power to destroy uh, uh, people destroy institutions, destroy anything that they used to do. That is the institution. I happen to be the general overseer of that institution. Hmm. And, uh, by the power of the above baby. And uh, once you are, be, you are made the Esogma of baby, the Oba gives you all the power to deal with these people. The witches and wizards. Yes, when they come, if they come here, they become ineffective, and uh, we we'll deal with them mm. as a teacher would deal with his people in the class. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, I was made to understand you are the oracle of Benin Kingdom. What? Uh, explain to the viewer. Uh, well, strictly speaking. Uh, that uh, matter of Oracle came 
as a nickname. That is not a part of my title. Mm -hmm. It came as a nickname. People haven't watched me over time making public statements or prophesizing on any issue, mm -hmm. and not particularly about political issues. Whatever I say comes true. Mm. So this, they raise it, They're not that I say I'm oracle. Mm. Uh, people now started... The perception of uh, uh, people say, you are the oracle. Whatever you say, if I tell you that Mr. A, who is a candidate and election, will win. He wins. He will win. Mm. And uh, many other things. If I tell you this man, no matter how much he spends, he's not going to win. He won't that win. will be it. Mm. For example, uh, President Jonathan, uh, when he came, he was coming to see the Monoba in the palace. Mm. I ought to be there, but I said I will not go because I do not want to pray for somebody who will not win. You knew that Jonathan I, was not going yes, to win the election? Yes, I said so. M months before uh, the election, and the, his opponent, I also said so. Uh, that? Well, before the people here became part of APC, I made a statement at the Ogwe Stadium. Mm. Buhari was there, a ordinary person there, and Tiku was there. All the big guns then, they were all there. They were in the uh, party that came to the APC. Tinubu and others. Mm. I went to the Rostrum and told them that the new party that was being formed will form the next government of this country. And that the person who will be a president in that government is in the crowd here. So such things gave rise to uh, the word oracle. Oracle. Okay. I'm not. Uh, I didn't say I'm the oracle. It's part of the. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, sir, let's go back. Let's go down memory lane, sir. Yes. What would the viewer know about your background, humble background? Well, I think what they need to know is that I started off my life as a nationalist. At the age of 19... Before then, sir, where were you born? I was born in Benin City. Which year was yeah. that? You say? Which year was that? Well, I was born in 1929. By next year, by the grace of God, I will be 90. Yes. So, at the age of 19, I was uh, uh, lured into national movement because I felt that we should fight the British people so that they could live our shore and okay. let us live our own life. Mm. Okay. So, so I, I you, was you had your edu early education here in Benin? Everything here. Where? Which school? I went to the Benin Public School mm. here. Mm. I left there for the Western Bus High School here, Benin. Mm. That was where I had my... We were the first set to have the London GC. And uh, from there I took on to extra uh, curricular reading and all the rest of it. Mm. I became uh, a writer. And by the year 1955 and so on, I, have started to attract byline in the Nigerian newspapers. Of those days? Of those days. Mm. The Daily Times, the Daily Service, and in 1949, the Tribune. The Tribune. Yes. So, okay. so, so, I, so at the, uh, after the completion of your secondary school, Yes. what happened? Did you further your education or oh, secured I, employment with the... Uh, I, when I left school, I refused to work. You refused to work? I refused to work. Reason? My, because the nationalist movement was on. And what was operating now in our minds then, those who were in the movement, is that Nigeria should be free. 
Mm. Even my mother was worried. Go and get work so that I said, I will go, I will look for work, madam. Never reach. I didn't look for work. I became a freelance R writer. writer. Yes. And then a political act, I mean a nationalist, under the ages of the Zikis movement. That is where I started. Mm. When the Zikis movement was banned in 1950 by the British, we became uh, members of the Nas uh, NCNC Youth Association. I became the uh, general secretary for NCNC Youth Association in the then Benin province. From here to Asaba and others, I was the general secretary. Yes, there we were until in 1958. Because of the political situation in the country then, and I was not happy with the way NCNC people uh, were handling our issue, that the creation of Midwest state, for reasons that uh, other people could not see, I decided to leave the NCNC. I defected to the action group. To the action group yes. owned by Chief. Late Chief. Yes, Chief Oba Femi Awala. Yes. Mm. Okay. I was, I was accepted as a member in Chief Awala's parlor at Ibadan. Not minding where you came from, which is Western, uh, the Midwestern state. Yes. As it was then called. No. I, the action group was happy to get me uh, into their fold. Before then, before I joined the action group in Benin, mm. uh, you can count the membership uh, just like that. But by the time I defected to the action group, in the months and years running to the federal election of 1959, mm. the action group became a party to beat in uh, in the Midwest region. In the Midwest, okay. Yes. Okay. So, sir, can you recollect some of those who started the struggle in the NCNC before moving to uh, the Action Congress? The, those who? Those who, along whom you started the struggle. Oh, yes, why not? In the Zikis movement. If you like. Uh, our president was uh, Raji Abdallah. From Okene. From Okene. Yes. He was the president. Then Mukugo Okoye from the east was the general secretary. Osita Aguna was the vice president. Tony Nahuru, on whose uh, sake I joined the nationalist movement, because the British people were jailing him for doing nothing. Uh, he was not a card carrying member of the Zikis movement. And that was not known to many people. Antony Enahoro. Antony Enahoro. He was my idol. I was the one that I looked up to uh, in becoming a, a nationalist at a very early age. But he was in the, mo he was in the battle. Uh, there are many. Okay. I, uh, how many of them are alive today? Well, last uh, two years, about two years ago, we had a meeting here in Benin under my own uh, NGO, mm. where we honored old nationalists. Including those that are of the, blessed memory? Yes. And those ones alive? Yes. Chief Enauro was the principal person. We honored him posthumously. Mm. Then we selected one, each from the old regions. You know, there were three regions in the country. Mm. When the Midwest region was created, mm. it became four. So we took one, one from the four regions. My friend Tanko Yakasai from Kano, came from Kano to attend. From uh, the West, mm. Jack Conde, you know Jack Conde? Latif. Latif mm. came from the West. 
to attend. Then from the old eastern region, my friend Umbazilike Amechi came from the east to attend. Then from the old Midwest region, Senator Nosike Iko, who was two time senator, came to attend. Mm. These are people who are still living. And we share the same birthday. Mm. Coincidentally, wow. the four of us share the same birth year. Jack Condé was 1929. Uh, Yakase eh? is our senior. Wow. Yakasa is 91 now. 91. Tanko Yakasa is 91 now. So. Umbazilike. Umbazilike, 1929. Uh, Senator Nosike Iku, 1929. Three of us. We, were, we know ourselves. We mm. share the same. Uh, so those are the ones that I operated with, who knew me and I knew them. But there are others, many of them have gone to the other side. Okay, sir, before you, at the beginning of the program, you told the viewer that uh, the movement you formed was principally to challenge colonial masters for them to hasten the process of giving Nigeria her independence. Of course, yes. How challenging was that period for people like you? It was uh, really very challenging. And uh, that was really what made me to uh, join forces with the youth at that particular time. Because the British, the Zikis movement was formed in 1946 by the radical youth in the NCNC. And the British people went all out to jail these young people. Particularly in 1948, most of the Zikis leaders were put into jail by the British people. That was what really made me to say, why, why should I not uh, go into the battle to join so that we fight the British <laughs> so that they could live a country for us. You were not afraid of your life then? Well, we didn't think about life. There was not the type of policy they are not doing. We didn't think of what I would gain from the enterprise. No. All that was in our mind was Nigeria must be freed from the British people, from colonialism. That was all that we were about. No one would think, oh, after uh, independence, I will be minister, I will be... No, all those were not there. And there was nothing like tribalism, what they now have in the present politics, that, oh, this man is a, a Christian, the real mate must not be a Christian, so nothing like that. Hmm. For example, in the Zikis movement, Raji Abdallah was uh, the president. He's from the northern region. His vice president, Osita Aguna, was an activist based in Kano, mm. although an Igbo man. Mm. And uh, we didn't bother who, who, who he was. Both Raji Abdallah and uh, Osita Aguna were Kano activists. Mm. But they were picked. So uh, no one ever thought, oh, what will I gain or what would be my uh, ministerial appointment after independence? No. All that we were bothered about, how to free Nigeria from the shackles of imperialism. And that was our mission. Okay, how did you do that? We what was the mode of operation? Well, we then? yes. We pursued it by principally holding mass meetings, lectures, from place to place. When you say from place to place, you mean from the southern part of the country down to the northern part of the country? Oh yes, oh yes. Every sector of the country was in the battle. Hmm. Uh, in my area, for example, 
we were holding rally from one street corner to the other to sensitize the people why they must join the forces that want the British people to go. That mm. was all. And the British were uh, British people were out at the flimmest excuse to jail uh, any of these uh, radical youths. At a stage, it was becoming uh, very uh, bad that uh, it would appear that there was going to be a violent revolution. In the country? In the country. I want to assure you that the, that the British agreed to grant Nigeria independence was principally due to the activities of the Zikis movement hmm. before it was banned in 1950. And even after the ban, we went to, as I said before, NCNC Youth Association. Mm. Then one F. S. McQueen was the president. While Umbazilike Amechi, still there, was the general secretary. We did all that was po humanly possible to harass the British people mm. out of this place. Okay. You talked about so many of your colleagues being jailed and yes. harassed yes. by the British colonial masters. Yes. What personal experience do you have to share with the viewer? You, your humble self. Well, I was not in the forefront of the movement. But in my own little way, I was charged to court along with seven other youths. For? for uh, what they call uh, activities likely to cause a breach of the peace. And uh, I was charged before Chief Magistrate Showa Mimo. He was a Chief Magistrate here in Benin. In Benin City. In Benin so City. you were charged here? Yes. You were from Lagos. Where were the offense committed? Here in Benin. Alleged offense. Here in Benin. Okay. It was committed at the... As a matter of fact, I didn't take part in any disturbances, but they wanted a place where they could hook me. And, uh, probably, probably to scare you. Not only they, they, they could make you, they could kill you, they could do anything. You see, at that time, when the, any moment the police or the special uh, police came to invite you to the station. Mm -hmm. You will just get your pints and all the toiletries ready with you as you are going because you may not call back. It was as bad as that. Mm -mm. The tension was high. So, so what? What? what, what uh, let, uh, that says when I was charged before Shuwa Mimo, he could not try the case. Then another person came to take his place. He was transferred to. Worry or Sapele, another judge, Igbo judge, came to take his place, Dandi Oyama, the man who was in The Hague. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -mm. He came, I, I was appearing now with seven of my youths before Dandi Oyama. Mm. The fortune we had was that the government then could not have witnesses to prosecute the matter. After six months of uh, going to court and coming out, the case was uh, struck out. Struck out? Yes. And uh, fortunately for you, that did not scare you from continuing with the struggle? No. It emboldened me. It emboldened me. Mm -mm. If my mentor, Chief Antonio Nauru, had gone to the place three times, consecutively like that. What? Why should I be afraid? So it emboldened me. As a matter of fact, if you were arrested and jailed, you become a hero at that time. At that time? Yes. Okay. Okay, sir, let me, uh, let me, the viewer might be interested to know uh, at what point in time of your life did you get married? Well, because of my activity, I did not marry in time. First, the money was not there. The money was not there for was you to not get money. There. But your parents were alive then? Yes. But I 
married uh, not 1950, 1957. 1957. Seven, yes. You got your... Yes. 1957. Okay. Let's hear about, let's hear the story. How did you get married? Uh, well, I found a suitor and uh, we talked and uh, we agreed. It was not, I, I would not go to any church at that time because of our stance. We would not go to any, anything where the British people have hand. So I, would, I didn't go to the English church to go and marry. I do the traditional. Traditional. I did the traditional marriage. And that was it? Yeah, that was it. So that means it must have been arranged by your parents? Well, my parents, yes. I, 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 I took my wife to my parents and I told them the method. Of my father was a polygamy, polygamy. He was a polygamist. Uh, yes. So you are a product of. Oh, a very big polygaminous home. My you yourself? No, my father had eight wives. Eight wives yes. during his lifetime. Yes, and he had several children. How many of you he left behind? When he transited on the fourth of December. In uh, 1973, he left 25 children, made 25. up of 15 women, 10 men. Okay, so that means you are also a polygamist. Well, I married one. I won't say so. I have only one wife in the house. Only one? Yes, by my own decision. Okay. By my own, for my own peace. <laughs> yeah. Not that uh, anybody had compelled me to take to that. For peace. To reign in your in my in my home. You and I decided to, you to stay with one. Yes, I'm very happy today. The children are all grown up, and uh, I'm a happy grandfather, mm. great grandfather, and great great grandfather okay so uh so share with the viewer the type of politics you played in those days with the likes of chief uh awolo obafemi awolo of blessed memory well and uh your contemporaries in the northern part of nigeria the likes of uh sir amodi bello sardona osokuto the tapawa balewa well, the politics then, as I have said before, was not a selfish one. There was no question of what will I become. And if you don't get it, you must tear the whole system. Okay, sir. Sir, you said the type of politics you played in those days, there was no money. No, it was purely patriotic. So. So what was the attraction? The attraction was every politician then, every leader then focused on how Nigeria would become a, a country that people will envy. That was all. The late Almadu Bello, uh, Sir Almadu Bello, uh, Chief Oba Femi Awolawo, mm. and Namdi Azikwe, they were not looking at what they would get from the country. Every one of these great men played his role, focusing on how to make Nigeria a better country. Mm. Unlike now, when people take politics as a do or die affair, it was not so. When you started, it wasn't so? At all, mm. at all. We were thinking only about Nigeria and not what you as an individual would air guard of the country. Okay, so sir, when eventually Nigeria got her independence from the British colonial masters in 1960, what was the feeling around people like you who struggled for the actualization of, of that? Yes, I, I, I told you I left the NCNC for the action group in mm. 1958. The federal election of 1959, 
which was the last election conducted by the British, mm. I played a very prominent role campaigning for, for Chief Awolowo. And we thought he would win. But when the result came out, it was very distasteful to some of us. We did not believe that uh, the election was all that free. But you cannot compare such election with what is happening today. But the, when you felt it was no free and fair, why didn't you go to court then? Oh, people went to court. They yes. went? Oh, yes. People mm. went to court. Chief Awolowo went to court. But he did not change You've heard of uh, two, uh, something to tell there, uh, something. It is a uh, uh, court uh, pronouncement. Chief Awolowo went to court. Mm. But the court decided that uh, the election was good. Uh, that was it. That was it. Viewer, if you are just joining us, the program is Reflections, coming to you on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. And uh, our guest, as uh, you may be aware, is uh, the uh, Chief David Edebiri, yes. OON, the Esoban of Benin Kingdom. Uh, who the, the program is playing host to. So before the break, I was uh, asking you about uh, politics in those days and uh, what we have in the present days in Nigeria. Uh, it's, uh, I, I read in your program that uh, you bowed out of politics a few years back. Why did you take such a decision? Oh yes, in the year 2003, after the election, I found that the uh, voters card we had was no longer uh, the issue, that uh, there were other forces uh, that uh, dictate who wins an election. And that is number one. Number two, I found that in our area, my mates were no longer in the field. Many of them have died. Those who did not die were either uh, no longer functioning as politicians. Mm. So the field was no longer uh, suitable for people like uh, me. Because the new breed who came up could not hear my language and I cannot hear their own. I could not hear their own. So I decided after the 2003 uh, something that uh, I retired from politics after spending 60 something years. So I said I would keep out of partisan politics. But I did not resign from politics per se. Mm -hmm. Partisan politics. Which means yes. you still Which play the game from oh, the side. I, I, I still take part in national discourse. From time to time, I still, if I feel on serious about any issue, I come out with statement and uh, I support any candidate that I want to support in an election. But I will never play part partisan politics again or take a party card. Or whatever it is mm -hmm. yes okay uh, so I don't know what is your candid view and opinion on restructuring that some politicians are talking about the issue of restructuring that people are now thinking about is just uh, a lazy uh, mass way of uh, looking at things uh, restructuring is a continuous process. Uh, it will continue from time to time. But you don't get to the middle of the game and start to bring in new rules. There was an election in 2015.
restructuring was not made an election issue. Somebody won, not because he promised that he will restructure the country. But after uh, you have tried all that that means and it didn't work, suddenly the issue of restructuring came up, as if that is what everything in Nigeria hitches on. No. Uh, there will be restructuring. Now we are going in for another election. Mm -hmm. The party that won restructuring, let them make it an election issue. Discuss it and ask for votes on that basis. So uh, if their party wins, the, their candidate wins, it will be bound to restructure the country. It's not something you will just start now. After doing this, next year, another person comes to power, another restructure. Mm. It doesn't work. For example, when they branched off from the parliamentary system of government, some of us have never agreed up to tomorrow that, that, that the present uh, uh, presidential system of government is the best thing for Nigeria. My idol, my late Antonio Nahoro mm. never agreed until he died. He called for parliamentary system, which 70 something uh, parliamentarians are now asking. Of. Chief Nahoro had never accepted the present system. I have never accepted it myself. Why? Because Why do you hold such a position? Yes. First, we were with the British for about a hundred years. Mm tutoring us about this parliamentary system. We knew it in and out. Suddenly, you just jump away from that to take a system you do not know anything about. The consequence of that was that what we are practicing now is neither an American uh, para, I mean, uh, presidential system mm -hmm. or any other system. We did not take American system fully. We take American uh, uh, presidential system. All our legal uh, laws are still patterned after the British uh, law. Mm. That is not fair. Then besides that, the one we are practicing now is very expensive and gives room for manipulation. You mean it, it is too expensive to operate? It's too, too operate. expensive for the country's economy to shoulder? Yes. Why do you that, say so? That I say so because many things that are now brought in under the parliamentary, uh, parliamentary system, they will not find any place there. And another issue is, under this present system, your representative is not obliged to do what his constituency or your constituency want him to do. Because in the first place, somebody will come from US or Britain or whatever. Mm -hmm. He comes here doing election, he contested election because he has money, he wins. He goes straight. He's not owing any obligation to anybody. Someone who did not even know how the party was formed will be picked by the president from Canada to become a federal minister. You cannot question him. Mm -hmm. But in the parliamentary system, you have to pass through the, uh, the, the line to become a minister. And if you misbehave, there is a procedure through which you will be recalled straight away mm -hmm. under the British parliamentary system. Mm -hmm. But these are not present in the one we are practicing now. First, we do not understand it. Two, those who say they understand it are merely twisting the whole thing to suit their own purpose. What is happening in the uh, upper legislature today at the middle of the people are making rules, electoral reform uh, rule, when election is uh, a few days time. 
they want something that will suit their own purpose. That so you mean that that one is not healthy for the political? It's not healthy for politics anyway. It is not healthy to it's change the rules. Yes, at the middle of the game, you don't. You see, election is two months or less than two months time. Mm -hmm. You are now asking for electoral a law amendment, bringing new laws, new rules to guide the election. That is unhealthy. If you are walking, you are walking towards anarchy, cause confusion. So these are the issues. Okay. We understand the parliamentary system. We read it in school. We knew what it is. The disciplinary action you, you face if you do this, we know it. But in this one, it's everybody's game. A man who is in the saddle, a governor, will want his uh, brother-in-law, his wife, to take his own place. That does not happen in a parliamentary system. You have to pass through the tunnel and uh, the people will know you, you will know them. That is why I have never agreed to. I have on several occasions made statements calling for uh, uh, the reintroduction of parliamentary system in Nigeria. All these heavy, heavy debts we are falling into, they could have been averted if we were in, under the parliamentary system. And in any case, why did we change? Is it that some of our colleagues in the colonial uh, era, era, like India, Canada, um, and so on and so forth, who are still practicing a parliamentary system, is it that they are not doing well? The answer is no, they are doing well. So the call for restructuring is self-servicing. They are self-serving. They don't, they don't mean it They're just to suit their own purpose. Okay. So you talked about uh, how patriotism used to propel people like you to work for the development of Nigeria. Yes. Why do you think patriotism is so lacking now among Nigerians? Yes, uh, one of the causes is the system we are practicing. I have said so. This uh, presidential system mm. gives room for all manners of people to jump at anything. That is why nobody is, uh, only a few people can be said to be patriotic nowadays. Many of them are self-centered. What will suit my community? What will my family get from this pro uh, project? And so on and so forth. That is what is operating. Mm -hmm. But in the old, as I have repeatedly said, in the olden days, we don't think about that. You fight for your community, for amenities and all these things, mm. not to the detriment of the other person. Okay. Yes. So what about, uh, as we speak right now, people are still agitating for more states to be created. It's what? madness. Those who are agitating for more states are mad people. Because Reason. the states we have now, they cannot pay salary. No one state in this country is viable, except maybe Lagos, because of the uh, uh, situation there. No state in Nigeria can uh, say, I am not owing so, 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 so. But uh, the, those agitating for the most state to be created are uh, advancing the fact that uh, it brings development closer to the people. What development? A state that cannot construct a single road when it is big, when you cut it into two, well, well, where will the money come from? It's not so. Everyone is eyeing something. If a state is created, it might become a governor of a small state. That's all. It's self-interest. 
It is not in the interest of the country. Okay. So you mean when uh, you know, uh, Delta State was carved out of the defunct Bendel State, yes. it did not make any positive you know, difference to the people of the present Edo State? No, what, when the Delta people left, they left us as a state of one family. Edo State is just one family. And Edo State perhaps is the only state in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. First, that is not named after a river. It is not named? After a river. Okay. Or a deity or so on and so forth. What is, what is Edo? Eh? As you can see, Biwa, Edo, Edo no. means what? Edo State is a homogeneous state of one family. Mm. We are from one stock. So when the data people left, we were happier for it here. Mm -hmm. Because, take it from Benin City to Essen, that is the Central Senatorial District. We have the same uh, link, the same family ancestry. Mm. Go to the north of Edo, the same thing. So the, uh, you go to up north, you have a Coco Edo, and we are the same family. This is the United state that is homogeneous in the whole country, and that is not named after an, uh, a deity or, a deity or whatever. Okay. What do you mean by, for example, Delta State? What, do, what does it mean? That's, that's no meaning. That's no meaning. Or river state. Oh, well. <laughs> you okay. see, that is your uh, <laughs> understanding of. Uh, yes. So that is our view, sir. That is our view. So we f did not feel that we lost anything when mm. the data people. Okay. Okay, sir. That brings us to the issue of uh, Benin Kingdom. I was reading in one book that uh, the, it is the oldest surviving kingdom in the world, Benin Kingdom. How true is that? That uh, Benin Kingdom yes. is the oldest surviving kingdom. I do not say it is the only, but is one of the surviving kingdoms in the world. You have the United Kingdom. That is our master before. Mm. It's a kingdom. They are surviving. So we cannot be the only one. So what is the place of uh, Benin Kingdom in the contemporary society? The place of the of Benin Kingdom. Well, when you talk about that, you are not talking now again of a do state. You are talking of Benin Kingdom. Yes. Benin Kingdom is made up of seven local governments. Now, yes. Which although, are? although it is not a fair distribution, headed by the Oba of Benin, who symbolizes the whole thing, is the uh, head of the kingdom. Is the unique king we have, not unlike every other place where you have every tutuma, you have a, a traditional ruler of equal status. No. In Benin Kingdom, you have only one king. He has no equal, he has no competitor, competition of, after him. He has no rival. He is the man who symbolizes the political, the cultural, the social, and everything roped into one. So our role here is the Benin Kingdom exists as it has existed uh, in the olden days. The misfortune we had in 1897 mm -hmm. when the British came and uh, overran the place is the only thing that has uh, really uh, worked against us. Okay. So you say it is made up of how many local governments presently? Seven. Which are? Can you? Uh, uh, yes, already do. That is the city. Ego. Ikmobaoha. These three are the main uh, city 
uh, local government. Mm. Yes. Then you move towards this east, you have Orion, uh, local government. Then towards this area, you have a whole their local government. Mm. Those are for this area. Mm. Then on this uh, west, you have Ovia southwest and Ovia northeast, making it so. Mm. Okay. Where do you see Benin Kingdom in the future? Well, we know we are in a very microscopic minority, but we believe in upholding our culture. We believe in uh, retaining and maintaining our identity. And uh, we do not believe that no matter what happens, we are not going to give in for this modernization to sweep our culture and tradition away. To that extent, Benin Kingdom will remain a place to be respected by whosoever rules this country. Mm. Yes. But it's like uh, modernity is gradually eroding the culture, especially among the youth. Yes. How challenging will that be in the preservation of the culture known with the people of Benin Kingdom? You are right, but we, we, there are some of these movements one cannot help. You cannot, uh, uh, they have to take place. For instance, we've been battling with uh, this light here. Eh? Mm. If we want to say we remember what we were mm. 200 years ago, mm. what, well, can we get this light to continue this uh, interview? So there are things you must give in to. They are more than uh, something. Mm. But those core values of our tradition, we will not let them go. Okay. That is what I am saying. Okay, sir. Now, the last question from me, sir. Uh, of recent, Edo State was on the news several times because of uh, women trafficking that is being associated with the state, sir. Are you personally embarrassed by such a development? Very embarrassed. Very, very embarrassed. Every true Benin man must be embarrassed. Because what is happening now is not in our nature. I have tried to find out, examine the situation. Why? Why Benin? Why is it that out of 10 people arrested for illegal trafficking and all this, more than half will be Benin people? Why? Are we the poorest in the country? Is it that our girls are very promiscuous or what is it? The answer is no. Here we have old tradition guiding our our ways of life or well, suddenly either it is because people want to make uh, work quick or gather what does not belong to them they take to this type of something i am very embarrassed and that is why we are giving the amonoba a while the second all the support and the state government to see that illegal human trafficking is wiped out from our shore. We are not made for such a thing. We are not caught up for that business. So I am very much embarrassed. Mm. Okay. Viewer, that was Chief David Edebri O O N the Esokban Obinin Kingdom in the program Reflections. It's our hope you enjoyed being with us. 
And on behalf of the guest himself, I remain with Muhammad Abu Kassim, be with us sometime next week for another episode.